Good evening, tubers. Matt M. Roy back once again. Back to you guys with another thrift store haul video. Wasn't sure if I was going to get to this tonight, but uh, I had some extra energy, so I thought, why not? I uh, found some interesting items at the thrift store today, so without further ado, let's get started. First three things I found were these Dell monitors. Uh, these are 20 inch Dell screens, uh, LCD screens. So you got the two kind of gray and black ones here. They do have a black base there. And then you have the all black one here. Uh, they all have the same inputs. They have DVI, they have VGA, and then of course just your regular power input. Um, they're all in really decent shape. And I'll tell you a funny story. I picked up this one at the first thrift store. I paid nine dollars for this and then at the very end I went to the last CHKD and I saw this one and they wanted twenty dollars for it and I was like boy that's a lot of money but I want to ping it because I wanted a matched pair and that's one thing you guys got to remember when you're refurbishing computers it's always better to have a matched pair of monitors if you're going to be selling them in a dual monitor setup Next, we'll get into these two bags here. I went to a new thrift store today, uh, Thrift Store Village off of George Washington Boulevard here in Virginia. And the first thing I found there is this Netgear N300 wireless USB adapter, brand new for $5, sealed. Uh, and this will be a nice adapter to pair with one of the refurbished computers. It's model WNA3100. See, they boast it's good for 300 uh, megabits per second, secure connection. Multiplayer gaming, I would question. Um, really, when it comes to gaming, you want something a little bit quicker. An N600 or maybe even an N900 would be preferable. And, of course, better yet would be a wireless AC card. But for most of my users, this one will be just fine. Next, from uh, another thrift store, I can't remember where I got all this stuff, so you guys will have to bear with me. This one, I can tell you, came from CHKD, because they're the only ones that use these kind of tags. Paid $1.98 for this. Now, you're looking at this and probably thinking, hmm, Matt, looks like this must be a uh, mouse or something. Well, you would be really wrong to think that. And I was wrong, because that's what I originally thought. If I can do this one hand, I think I'll have to put the camera down. All right, tubers, finally got the zipper open. And what you find inside of this little bag is a tiny little Logitech uh, laptop webcam. Uh, you can see it says it has a Carl Zeiss lens, uh, 2 megapixel auto scan. So probably a 720p um, HD camera. But again, for the $2 I paid for it, that'll be nice to pair with a uh, computer. And of course, even came with a nice little case there. Next, just got a pair of Dell speakers. These are your basic Dell desktop speakers. Kind of snazzy looking, kind of um, Art Nouveau looking, if you will. Paid $2.98 for that, though. Let me see if she got the price. Um, I don't know where the price was. They, that's what they charged me for it, but honestly... It just says two pieces there, so I'm not sure if I paid the right price for that or not. And again, I like these because they are USB powered, and that definitely helps me uh, sell them. It's a selling feature because people don't need to plug these into uh, AC power. Next, this is pretty much just a bag of mice. I mean, literally, there are a whole bunch of mice on the bottom there. One I did get brand new in the package. They were all $2 a piece. This one's a Logitech M100 mouse. It's nice to see them in the packaging once in a while. You don't always get to see them brand new like that. And it definitely is a good selling feature, but yeah, nothing super special there. Let me go ahead and move all this stuff out of the way and get to the real meat and potatoes of this pickup. All right, Tuber, so definitely one of the highlights of this trip is this Ankyo receiver. I gave $12.98 for it. You can see it right there. This is the exact same Ankyo receiver that I have in my room uh, in the alcove. This is model number TX-SR603X, and this is a fantastic uh, 7.1 channel surround sound receiver. 
Um, the one thing this does not have that I wish they included was a phono input. But you can see you do have a plethora of other inputs. You have a DVD input right there, video 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, tape input, tuner and also a CD input. Now unfortunately I did not get the remote for this but that's okay. This is going to be saved as a backup in case my particular receiver goes bad and coming to the back the inputs are obvious and very impressive I must say. There are your speaker inputs and it's 7.1 channel. You can count it there, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The way that works is you have your center channel right there. You have your two front speakers right there. So if you go working this in two channel mode, you would just use those two. Your surround sound side speakers go there and then your surround sound back speakers would go right there. And then you have your Zone 2 speakers. I'm not exactly sure what that is for. I'm sure someone will tell me. Got an input there for an XM satellite radio receiver. You have your FM antenna input. And then your input for your AM loop antenna. And you have tons of inputs, including video pass-throughs, um, composite, S-video. Uh, no HDMI on this one. This one, I think, is a little too old for HDMI. But what you do have are some digital optical uh, inputs. You have three of those right there. You also have two coaxial, coaxial inputs. And you also have one optical output. And this one appears to be in really good condition. Honestly, I have not fully tested this, but I will get to that in the next few days. Um, hopefully it works, but when I turn on, I hear the protection circuits kicking in. So I have good hopes for this one. And last but not least, uh, for those of you that have watched my vlog from today, you've probably already seen this. I picked these up from a thrift store. It's called the Hope House Thrift Store here in Norfolk. I wound up getting a total of five of them, but I didn't bring them all in. But I did get the three different styles that I got. The other two are identical to this particular system. Now, I will tell you I gave $35 a piece for these, which seemed a little excessive at the time, um, but I'll tell you in a minute my reasoning behind that. One thing I like that they do, they definitely um, spend some time and they write out everything that they know about these systems. They all are Core i5s, they're all missing the hard drives, and a good portion of them are missing the memory too, but luckily the ones that I purchased except for one or two um, do have at least some memory in them. This one's running an Asus motherboard. I believe this one is an Intel motherboard in these. Um, and it's really nice that they actually wrote out all the different ports. Like they went in and counted. It's got four PCI slots, um, four memory slots, six SATA ports. And that's one thing they do there that is really, really nice. Um, this is the only oddball. Honestly, this is an Antec case right there. You can see Antec. And it does say Intel Core i5 right there. You got your power button. Uh, reset button there. This one is the only one that's missing the optical drive, um, at least the cover. Uh, this one has the optical drive and this one never had one installed, but you know, that's fine. I got a plethora of those lying around. And the reason I was not upset about paying $35 a piece for these is the majority of them do have at least two of the USB 3.0 ports. And of course, you got your other various USB 2.0 ports. Uh, this one has a DVI, VGA, HDMI, and DisplayPort. When was the last time you've seen a motherboard that has every single um, monitor port that has pretty much been made in recent history? That is very unusual. All right, so we'll go to the next one. These two are both Cooler Masters, uh, though they're different size cases. This one's a little bit larger, though I definitely class both of these as being um, micro towers. They're both pretty small. Um, again, both running Core i5s. This one appears to have a newer gen than this. I believe that is the, the later sticker. I could be wrong, though. You guys will probably correct me in, in the comments. I do kind of like the cases. The Cooler Master cases, I don't know, they always held a uh, special place in my heart. Even though the more modern ones like this are not really that well made, I just kind of always like the brand myself. Uh, two USB ports on the front. I believe these are 2.0. 
So we'll come around to the side here. You can see that this was originally designed for a much beefier board. What's in there right now is just a micro ATX board, um, but I believe this would actually support a full ATX board. You got a spot here for a 120 mil fan, another one here, and then two more on the top if I pull that back. And coming to the back, this is the one that does not have USB 3.0. Um, this one, I believe, probably manufactured sometime around 2011. Um, but you have your decent array of ports here. Here you do have uh, DVI, VGA, and what appears to be an HDMI port, yes, that's not display port. And again, I'll probably show these more in future videos when I actually start working on them. And last but not least, and believe it or not, this is the last thing for this haul video, is this particular case design. This is, again, another Cooler Master Core i5 custom-built system. Uh, this one does have an Asus motherboard in it. And I'll go ahead and turn it around here. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is the only other one that did not have USB 3.0. So that is all I have for you guys tonight, tubers. It is pushing 10 o'clock. I'm getting very tired. Hope you guys enjoyed this thrift store haul. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.